भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय कृष्णाय वासुदेवाय देवकी नंदनाय नंदगोपकुमाराय गोविंदय नमो नम जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभो निनंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर शिवासादिगौर भक्त वृंद हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा आज ये दिवोरी आई आर थैंकफुल टू सुधामा चुत एंड बंडा नंदनी देवी दैट दे हैव ऑर्गेनाइज ए सत्संग प्रोग्राम एट देयर रेजिडेंस एंड दिवोरीज फ्रॉम गौरंगा देश वेयर ऑफ इन टाइम आई यूज टू विजिट सची माता हाउस एंड अवर रामानंद प्रभु आई थिंक कपल टाइम वी वर टुगेदर देयर so in devotional service always there are ups and downs sometimes we really progress very quickly like the new devotee that too enthusiastic when they are new devotee but after initiation for some time they are too enthusiastic and then they become little slack and and this is just normal a process because the the difficulties in this material world are always there it's not that we become devotee and difficulties disappear we have to tolerate the difficulties there is actually the one of the uh of the 64 अंगज ऑफ दी साधन भक्ति साधन भक्ति वाई दी साधन भक्ति एज सिक्सटी फोर अंग एंड वन ऑफ दी अंग इज टॉलरेंस एंड श्री चेतन महाप्रभु शिक्षा अष्टकम इज मोस्टली फोकस ऑन दी टॉलरेंस तृणाद अभी सुझी चेन so in devotional service what should be our attitude when we have difficulties or we have some uh setback what should be the mood of a devotee and shri prabhupada has often time quoted this verse from brahma's prayers to lord shri krishna in 10th canto of shrimad bhagavatam chapter 14 and what's number 8 is a very famous words often times shri prabhupad quoted this words that this should be the mood of a devotee in difficulties brahma was in difficulty because he was he wanted to test krishna and he was befell actually he was brahma brahma vimohan leela well actually brahma cannot be bewildered because he is a pure devotee of supreme lord so brahma's bewilderment is not by the external energy like arjun's bewilderment in the bhagavad gita is not by external energy it was by the internal energy and this bewilderment actually deepened their devotional service shri prabhupada is quoted these two example that it increases and deepen their devotional service so 
And this was Krishna's desire actually. Krishna says, oh, everybody is telling me that I am butter thief. I am very famous in Vrindavan as a thief. Navanita Taskar. Makhan Chor. I must have some pastime where the personality who is highly respected as the knower of all the Vedas and the creator, if he is actually, if he is acting as a thief and he will steal the calves and coward boys, then at least I will be a smaller thief as compared to him. Right? Krishna has some special plan. See, I'm stealing some butter, but he is going to steal the calves and coward boys, so he's a big thief actually. So Krishna has this mood actually that I would like to have some pastime in which the greatest scholar of the universe at the Vedagya, uh, Chatur Veda Garbha, Brahma is called Veda Garbha, because all the Vedas are in his you know, like, uh, 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 he is the inaugurator of the Vedic knowledge, the Chatur Mukhi, Char, ve, four Vedas and four faces. <clears throat> so Brahma was bewildered when he stole the uh, coward boys. Krishna has so many other purposes to fulfill through this pastime. But when Brahma realized that I have done a mistake, and then he came and offered his very celebrated prayers in the 14th chapter of 10th canto. These are called Brahma's prayers. They are very beautiful prayers. A full chapter is very wonderful, actually. Like our Sampradaya's head, Brahma is praying and he's actually establishing the devotional service and the mood of a devotee. And he's praying to a, a five-year-old Gopal, Krishna. And Brahma is the eldest and first living entity. But he's praying to a five-year-old Krishna. So this is one of the prayer which we will discuss today. That te anukampam susamikshamano have you heard this prayer tatte anukampam susamikshamano bunjane vatmakritam vipakam hridavakava bubhera vidadam namaste so this prayer said, therefore, that means therefore. Therefore, when the word therefore comes, it means something is connected to the previous verse. So before we go to this verse, let us see what is in the previous verse. In time, learned philosophers or scientists might be able to count. So this is the verse. In the time, means sometime in the future, like you have some future museum here. Dubai Future Museum, after 50 years, what will be you see here? So they may say something in few future we will do. So in time, learned philosophers or scientists might be able to count all the atoms of the earth which is not possible actually, but they may be able to count. The particles of the snow, they may count the particles of the snow. Or perhaps even the shining molecules radiating from the sun. The star or other luminaries, they may count this, which is not possible. Even you cannot count the sand in your Dubai. The one Huh? It's not possible to count how many particles of sand are there. So if you can be able to count that it's possible. But among these learned men who could possibly count the unlimited transcendental qualities possessed by you, the Supreme Person of Godhead, who have descended onto the surface of the earth, 
for the benefit are of all living entities. So they may count all this, but they will not be able to know your transcendental qualities. They are unlimited. Shri Prabhupada writes, Shri Sanatana Goswami explained that Lord Krishna is Gunatam. Gunatam. Like Guna, Gunatar, Gunatam. Good, better, best. So Gunatam means he is the topmost with all the transcendental qualities. Because he gives them life. Because, because of him all the qualities are are getting life because it is the life of everything, it is the source of everything. So this is this is a wonderful two commentaries by the two acharyas here. So what therefore what is therefore here means even the learned scholars may know Something which is impossible in this world. But still they will not be able to count or understand or estimate the transcendent quality, qualities of the Lord. And Brahma is saying this. Therefore, tata te, tata, therefore te. Te means you are. Te means he is addressing directly to Krishna who is in front of him. Anukampam. Anukampa is a very, very nice word. Kampa, Anukampa means compassion. Actually, this word is in a Bhagavad Gita also, in a Chatur Shloki Bhagavad Gita. Tesham eva nukampa artham aham agyan jatamaha nasyami atma bhavisto jnana deepe nabha. Anukampa word is there. So, Teshan Anukampa Artham means I become more compassionate, compassionate on them. So, Anukampa means compassion. Generally, compassion. Anu means when I see somebody who is my devotee and still he is in a difficulty or he has still not full knowledge of me. Kampa, actually word Kampa in Sanskrit means I shake. Kampa means, you know, when you are shaking. Anu means after seeing my devotees and difficulty, I become, I shake actually. I shake means I, I, I cannot tolerate that. So I become too much compassionate on them. So Anu Kampa means to become compassion, to become compassion on somebody. When he's a devotee, still he's in difficulty. Anukampa, Anukampam, Anukampam, Srila Prabhupada writes, compassion. So this is one of the great qualities of actually Krishna. He is always merciful. Usually the mercy of Krishna is coming through his devotees. And the greatest devotee is Radharani. And her place where she actually resides is Varsana. Varsana means always showering the mercy. Varsa means actually rain. So there is a rain of mercy always falling. But we are not able to really get that. So yes, if there is a rain outside, if you are sitting inside, inside your own apartment, you will not get any, you know, a, a drop of water. Though, though it is raining outside. This is also uh, sometimes, <laughs> when I was once in Bahrain, they told me a joke. He said, somebody came from outside and he asked, what is actually in this Bahrain? What is in Bahrain? He said, no rain, no train, no brain. <laughs> <laughs> He said, these are only three things which are here. No rain, no bread, no train. So somehow, like this, there only there is a sand and, sand and sun. 
On the top, on the head, is the sun, very hot, and down is the sand. That's all. Everything is here. But it's still, the point I'm saying is, Anukampa. So, so if, if there's a rain, if we don't go out, we will not get anything. Or even if there's a good part outside, a container, and if it's upside down, there may be whole day rain, there will be no drop inside, right? So actually the mercy of Lord is always showering for everyone. But our part is upside down, so we are not getting anything. So what we have to really look for is that somebody who is actually a devotee or a spiritual mentor, he only does one thing. He simply turn the part just upside down, so now the, you can get the mercy. It's not that he is giving any mercy, but mercy is coming from Krishna. He is simply making us recipient of the mercy by just turning us towards Krishna. The principle is that, like, rain water is coming from where? Ocean. It is the water of the ocean which is evaporating and becoming cloud and coming as a rain. So, rain water is not of the cloud, it is of the ocean. So the mercy given by a devotee is not his mercy, it is the mercy of Krishna. It's coming through devotee. And therefore Srila Prabhupada compared the devotee to the cloud. He does his austerities to evaporate, like, like sun evaporate the water from the ocean and then form the nice beautiful cloud. And then the right time it shower rain and cool everything and refresh everything. Similarly, sadhus undergo austerity and they imbibe the mercy of the Supreme Lord and then they shower it on the conditioned soul. That is the, actually what sadhu means. So it's not his mercy, it's Krishna. That we call his divine grace. His divine grace, it means Krishna Kripa Murti. The, the, his divine grace, when they translate in Hindi, what they write about Srila Prabhupada? Sri Krishna Kripa Murti. It means his personification of mercy of Krishna. So actually it is mercy of Krishna. So this is the greatest quality of Krishna. That he has Anukampa. Sumiksha, so Sumiksha Manu. What is the meaning of so Sumiksha Manu? Say su is a word superlative added to something. Su sukham. Ordinary sukham means happiness, su sukham means extremely, extremely happy. So su is a superlative word used to word. It is added to which word? Samiksha. Samiksha mano. Sama means complete. Samyak. Iksh means I. X is I. So, devotee is always waiting for the mercy of Krishna that he will someday mercifully look at us. It's called Kripa Kataksh. You have heard this word? Radha Kripa Kataksh is a full sort of poetry are a verses which says Radha Kirpa Kataksh. Krishna Kirpa Kataksh. Kataksh means his glance. Iksha means I. So the devotee is always eagerly and earnestly, Prabhupada writes, earnestly hoping for. So Sumiksha Manu means earnestly hoping for. It means we should be always hopeful. This is one of the nine characteristics of the Bhav Bhakti. 
that devotee is always hopeful that one day Krishna will shower mercy on me. Definitely, I am sure. So this should be our determination that we will one day definitely get the compassionate glance of Sri Krishna. I think Mahavishnu Maharaj used to sing one couplet, Keshav Keshav Kukiye Orna Kukiye Arsar. Say, always calm, call upon Keshav Keshav Keshav. Don't utter any other word. Kabhi to bhinak padegi. Someday your cry may reach to the ear of Krishna. One day your cry will reach to Krishna. So crying, Srila so, uh, Gorgoyan Swami Maharaj used to say, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came to open a school of crying, Karnan College. Karnan means crying, crying college, crying for Krishna. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was crying for Krishna. Please be merciful unto me when I can see you. This is a, the last verse of the Sikshashtakam is actually mood of Radharani. What is the last verse of the Sikshashtakam? Asliśya padpatan pranapnashtumam maramatam karotava yatha tatha vavididhat lampato mat prana natas to Krishna, you are independent whatever you want to do. You may embrace me or you may kick me, but I, I am, I am always hoping that one day you will be merciful. I will not leave your lotus feet. So that is actually the meaning of susmikshamano. That is the meaning of susmikshamano. That I am hoping that one day Krishna definitely shower mercy because he is showering to so many devotees and one day my turn will also come. And when he is hoping for that, Brahma is saying, therefore one should always be hopeful that and eagerly, eagerly and earnestly wait for the compassionate glance of Krishna. When? Next line says, Bhunjan evatma kirta vipakam. Kirtam vipakam. What is the meaning of these lines? Bhunjan means, generally Bhunjan, word to word, Srila Prabhupada's here writing Bhunjan. Word Bhunjan actually now, when I came, I think you were offering prasad, right? Yes. And it was time actually for prasad. So what we will do prasad? Bhunjan. Bunyan means we will relish prasad, bunjan. So bunjan means when we are in this world undergoing the result of our karma, number one, which are already mature vipakam, and we have some thing actually already in quota for us, which may be some trouble, but usually some commentaries, Acharya write that devotees when they take when they take initiation, all their past karmas are burned. So then what is about the devotees? Vipakam. Vipakam means mature. Paka, paka means paka means mature. Vipakam means especially mature. What is that? Atma, Atma Kirta means once one done himself. At means oneself, kirta means whatever he has done. And vipakam, the mature, what? Karmas are finished when we take actually uh, devotional service. And this is the uh, uh, first, this is the first characteristic of Vaidhi Sadhan Bhakti, which we which when began, and what is that in the word used for that by Ruchra Rupa Goswami? Klesha Ghani. Klesha Ghani. You remember this word from Sri um, Nectar of Devotion? Vaidhi Sadhan Bhakti, when you start, Vaidhi Sadhan Bhakti means chanting Hare Krishna, following four regulatory principles, accepting the shelter of the spiritual master. Klesha Ghani. All the reaction to these sinful activities are completely eradicated. That is called Klesha Ghani. That is in the beginning. When you start devotional service, this 
But then what is that which is maturing and giving us some trouble? So Acha right, it is the aparad which we commit during devotional service. When we begin devotional service, karma act, the reaction to the karma are already finished. But we do some aparad and of all the aparad, naam aparad. There are seva aparad to the deities. If we do seva aparad, they can be completely clean, cleansed by naam, by, by serving the Lord. <coughs> if we do some aparad to the Lord, then by chanting Hare Krishna, that can be also nullified. <coughs> but when we do aparad to the holy name, then there's no way. Then holy name will not actually manifest its mercy. Holy name will not manifest its mercy. So aparad are actually lingering on. <coughs> Why devotees are suffering? Because of aparad. <coughs> not actually because of karma. Because of aparad. And of the all offenses, which is the most worst offense and very dangerous offense, is compared to the mad elephant offense. Vaishnava aparad. The creeper of dev uh, devotional service is completely destroyed, like a mad elephant destroy the garden. Our creeper of devotional service will be completely smashed by Vaishnava aparad. So there are nine more uh, offenses, but this is the most, I mean, heavy offense, and we should at all cost avoid that offense. So what is actually devotees waiting for the merciful glance of the Krishna earnestly and eagerly? When? When he is actually getting in trouble because of his offenses or even some past karma which are coming on its way. So then, then he is waiting for mercy. But you only waiting for mercy? No, no. He's not only waiting for mercy, but he is doing active devotional service. That is the third line. Hrda vaka vapubhi. Hrda vaka vak means by words. Hrda means actually by heart or by. That we can work by three things body, words, and mind. The activities of devotional service when we perform. They are to be performed by three things. What is called body, mind, and words. And sannyasis, when they get sannyas, they get three danda. And these three danda represent actually body, mind, and words engaged in service of Krishna. And therefore, when sannyas is getting three danda, one spiritual master used to tell him, now you are getting BMW. BMW, big car, body, mind, and words, but BMW, now with your danda, travel all over the world. So this is the BMW of a sannyasi. <laughs> so devotional service is executed by body, mind, and words. All our devotional activities are actually by these three things. This is an Avedi Sadhana Bhakti is by these three things. And all these three things, Hirdavaga Vapubhi Vidham Namaste. He is uh, always engaged, Vidha, offering all his three. So he is not only expecting mercy eagerly, but he is ready to undergo all tribulation because of his offenses, which are already mature and he is suffering. Is is ready to accept that, and when he's accepting that, still he's continuing his devotional service. 
It's not that he has given up his chanting holy name, he has stopped reading Bhagavatam. He has, uh, he has, he has, many people, they are actually emotionally only motivated in devotional service. They are not cultivating devotional service under a proper spiritual guidance. They are good, like a, a, a thesis. Now, they are not atheists. They are believer in God, but they believe in God that God will do whatever we want. Prabhupada used to say in Second World War, many people after the World War become atheists because they thought that God will protect our brothers, our husband, our son who has gone in war. But war people will have, when they are fighting, they will die. When they died, they say, God, there is no God. And I met many people in my life, actually, they are good devotees, they are chanting. Somehow some accident happened in their life. Some dear and near person died in their life, and then they gave up devotional service. Many examples you can see people when get you know, the job is gone. You know, some uh, this is there's also in the Middle East is something like that. Some all of a sudden, sometimes there's a crisis, the job is gone, the settled person is uh, unsettled, then all his devotional service is crumbled completely. But this verse, Brahmaji says, no. Whatever comes, you al always wait for the mercy and simultaneously continue your devotional service. And, and with that mood, you endure whatever difficulty is coming. Endure that. Then what is the result? The result is Jiveta. Jiveta yo mukti pade sadaya bhak. Now, Jivet and Daya Bhak is an example. Example is like that. If simply son survives, then he will inherit the property of the father. He has not to do anything. If son is alive, then he will inherit all the property of the father automatically. So if the devotee continue his devotional service with all the difficulties and with hoping that Krishna will be merciful, so he will be eligible like a son to inherit the property of the father. Daya Bhaka means, the word is Daya Bhaka means rightful here, means claim. Now the one word is important, Mukti Pade. This word Mukti Pade Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya actually was remi removing this word from this verse because he was convinced by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He said, Why Mukti Pade? Devotee don't need Mukti. It should be Bhakti Pade. He was thinking like that. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, No, Mukti Pade is a perfect word. He said, What is the meaning of Mukti Pade? See, Mukti is at, a person at his lotus feet, Mukti is a servant. That is Mukti Pade. So Krishna is a personality, Mukti is waiting at his lotus feet to render service. It means he will get the association of the person who gives liberation to other. So Mukti Pade doesn't mean actually that he get uh, Brahma, uh, Sayujya Mukti are merging into the Brahm, but he will get the association of the lotus feet of Krishna, who is bestower of the uh, liberation to the ordinary jnanis. So Mukti Pade doesn't mean actually that uh, impersonal something, but Mukti Pade means the one's lotus feet that grant liberation. Now I'm reading the translation by Srila Prabhupada. My dear Lord, Brahma is saying, one who earnestly waits for you to bestow your causeless mercy upon him. So we have to wait for the Krishna's mercy. It will come one day. But it, will, it is not really... Once one devotee approached Srila Prabhupada and said, I am chanting Hare Krishna for 10 years. Not feeling any change in my life. I'm, I'm, Prabhupada, he had his but I said, I'm chanting for 40 years. It means you have to continue chanting. The another example sometimes is given. Some person, he has a charcoal in a hand. 
and he was saying, hey God, make this diamond, please God, make this diamond, please God, make this diamond. And for, say, for a year he was saying like that. But then after a year he said, it's no chance. But the next day only, after a year, once he said, make this diamond and it become diamond. He said, one year was a time actually to clear your all offenses and then only once you say and it is done. So it's, it's, it's like that we may have 20 years, 50 years in devotional service. But sometimes there's another example, sometimes we have the lock on the door and it's not opening, we lost the key, then we hit, 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 it's not breaking. And somehow somebody comes and just hit once and it's opened. Oh, he has opened. Actually, it's not he has opened. You hit and he's already loosened completely. The last hit was like the last uh, nail. But it, everybody has tried, so it, it is not one person's job. So similarly, the mercy is already in a process. Sometimes it's said, we are chanting, but we don't see anything. The example given is, if you have a weight, if you have a a, a, a freshly cut, uh, if a freshly cut wooden stick you want to put in a fire, will it catch fire? Please sit on the chair peacefully. Yeah. Will the will the green will the green uh, stick freshly cut from the tree will catch fire? You put in a fire. No. So does is it means fire has no power? Fire has a power. But the green wood is not burning. Why? Because it is wet. But fire is acting on it. It is drying it. It is drying it. Uh, and next time, if you put that, it will burn. So similarly, we have so many piles of many lifetimes karma. We are chanting, they are burning. Process is there, but there's no result because still it is not a right time for it to manifest. So we have to wait for that mercy. It will come. It is already in the process. It is in a pipe. But but for you to get it, it may take time. So we have to wait it. So this is the first thing. Mercy is our birthright because Krishna is all merciful. And he will... Definitely bestow his mercy. And he is, by, he is bestowing his mercy. But that mercy is now evaporating all our aparada and sin. So we are not actually feeling it. It is working, but we are not feeling it. It says a mango is a mango. It's a green is a mango also. When yellow, it is also mango. So similarly, devotional service, when we are doing it, say in a green stage, it's not sweet. But it is devotional service, it is mango. One day it will mature. If you keep that mango, it will be one day very juicy and sweet. So devotional service is actually very sweet, but we are not tasting it sweet because still it is unripe. Our practice is not yet ripened completely. So further it is read, <clears throat> all the while, all the while when he is waiting for the causeless mercy, all the while, patiently suffering the reaction of his past misdeeds. Patiently suffering. Patiently suffering the reaction of his past misdeeds. And offering your respectful obeisance <clears throat> with heart, word, and body, also continue devotional service, is surely eligible for liberation, for it has become his rightful claim. So in our devotional service, we have three things to do now. We must always hope that Krishna will shower his mercy. Then we should also, if we're, some difficulties are there, we should endure for that and think that Krishna is merciful. He has actually reduced our suffering. We are actually too much um, grassly uh, wrong, but Krishna is merciful, so he has given us small punishment. 
This is the oldest story you might have heard sometime. There were two persons going on a path. One person all of a sudden, he was a very, he was a very gentleman, nice person, not offending anybody and very soft hearted person. But he got a big throne in his sole of the foot and really bleeding like anything and very painful. The other cruel person actually and, and very rough and uh, you know dangerous person, but he on the same path where he got the thorn, he found a, 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 a bag of the golden coins. So both went to actually the, the one who is astrologer or one who can see the future and past of the person. Both said, well, this is something. See, here is the right person. He has not done anything wrong in this life. And in the same place, he got a big thorn piercing his foot and bleeding. And the other notorious person, he got a bag of gold coin. That person said, your astrological chart says the person who got the thorn today he was supposed to be hanged by his past karma he should have been pierced by the lens solely but because of here are his honesty and sincerity that dangerous pierce has converted into a small thorn so he actually is saved from greatest danger by small thorn. On the other hand, the person who found the golden bag of golden coin, today he was supposed to be enthroned as a king but because of his past pious karma. But because since he has done all nonsense, so he has actually exhausted all the pious, and only he got a bunch of golden coins. So the karmas work like that, Sometimes it takes long time, actually, and, and we may still suffer. Some great devotees, we, you see the, the life of the devotees, they are suffering bodily pain. Most of the devotees in the end were suffering bodily pain. But their spirit of Krishna consciousness is very high all the time. They are not at bodily platform at all. So this is at, at that level, actually. It's not... We have to come to that level in one day. So, what are three things in the verse that uh, in this verse that we have to meditate in our life? Krishna will definitely be merciful because he is always showering his causeless mercy. We may have committed some offenses and some uh, some karma for that. Uh, if when they are mature, we may suffer. So. We should tolerate that. And number three, when we are tolerating, we should continue praying. Continue our devotional practices without fail. Then the result is that definitely we will be the rightful claimer that Krishna will bestow his all merciful glance and deliver us from all suffering. Shri Prabhupada, this commentary says, Srila Sridhar Swami explained in his commentary that just as the legitimate, legitimate son has to simply remain alive to gain an inheritance from his father, one who simply remains alive in Krishna consciousness, following the regular principle of Bhakti Yoga, automatically becomes eligible to receive the mercy of personality of God. In other words, he will be promoted to the kingdom of God. So we have to remain in Krishna conscious, whatever happened, arts or even in the life, difficulties or whatever, but we should be fixed in our practice of Krishna consciousness. The words Susmik Shamanu indicate the devotee earnestly await the mercy of Lord Krishna, even while suffering the painful effect of previous sinful activities. Lord Krishna explained in the Bhagavad Gita that there is a devotee who fully surrender unto him is no longer liable to suffer reaction of his previous karma. Where is that Krishna said in Bhagavad Gita? Sarva dharman paritajamam ekam sharanam aham tom sarva pape. I will deliver you from all sinful reactions. So Prabhupada is quoting this verse. However, because in his mind a devotee may still maintain the remnant of his previous sinful mentality, this is what is called proclivity for sinful activities. So though all the reactions are burned, but still the mentality is there. 
is a good example is Ajamil. He was doing all the nice services of a Brahman. But only all of a sudden he saw some bad scene and his, uh, his mentality was awakened and he was carried out by that. So there is a possibility. Mentality is still there. See, this is what is called our nature. How a nature of a person is formed. Each person has a different nature. Subhav, right? So how the Subhav is formed? By the influence of three modes of material nature. Our nature is by the influence of three modes of material nature. Where these three modes of material nature actually act on our subtle body, mind, intelligence and false ego. And this is the subtle body which we are carrying since time immemorial. We have changed all these outer bodies, but our subtle body is same. Like, uh, how many, you ask this, small, this child how many dresses he has changed since he's born, he cannot remember. Right? Nobody remembers how many dresses we have changed. But I am same. Similarly, so many grass bodies we have changed, but our subtle body is same. And subtle body is influenced by three modes of material nature. So every person has a different habit. He has a different nature. He may be devotee. You can see some devotee, when they are chanting, they are sitting like this for two hours or eight. They will never move. It means they have practiced so many yoga practices in last life, lifetime, so they can sit for two hours. You can see so many devotees, they are just walking and chanting, and running and chanting. They were too passionate in their past life, actually, running from pillar to pole. So it's still their devotional service, their mood is same. So you can see the devotees, uh, nature is like that. So it's very difficult to change the nature. It continues. Therefore, good association is needed to change the nature. The whole purpose of devotional service is to really reform our nature and our mentality from sinful proclivity to actually the devotional activity. The whole process is that. Mind will say, don't do this. You are already comfortable what you are doing. But you have not really listened to the mind. We have to listen to the super soul. There are two, there are two, there are actually two things from inside is actually trying to guide us. One is our mind, which is really, for many lifetimes is actually contaminated with the sense enjoyment, mentality of enjoyment. Other is super soul, which is our real friend and wants us to guide us on the right path. So most of the people listen to the mind. It's called Manorathe Dhavato. Manorathe, Mano means mind, Rath means chariot. Dhavate means running on the chariot of a mind. Whatever mind said is just go like that. But we have not to go like that. We have to go like Arjun, whose chariot is driven by Krishna, not by his mind. So this, I think I just read this couple lines of the purport and then you can honor Prasad. So Srila Prabhupada writes, Lord Krishna, Bhagavad-gita, this we have done. However, because in his mind, a devotee may still maintain the remnants of his previous sinful mentality and Lord removes last vestige of the enjoying spirit. Enjoying spirit. By giving his devotee punishment, that may sometimes resemble sinful reaction. It's like that. I, some, I, I, it's not common here in this country, but some thief come and steal something from your home, what you will do? Call police. And over, hand over the thief to the police and police will punish him. But if your son take 500, say, rupees from your pocket, what you will do? Will you call police? No. But you will chastise yourself. You may punish him. And that punishment looks like some police was punished. But there is a difference between your punishment and policeman's punishment. Your punishment is actually to, to, uh, to rectify and actually uh, put the 
your son on a right path. Police punishment is a, a punishment according to the law. So most of the people, when they do sinful activities, they are subjected to the Yamaraj. There is a police and they punish according to the rule. But when the, when the devotee does something wrong, then he will not go to the jurisdiction of the Yamaraj. But the Krishna himself actually put him in certain situation which appears like he is suffering, but actually it is for his purification. But it is for his rectification. That's what it means, Prabhupada writes says, in that way, and a particular punishment given by the sinful activity is superficially designated to curtail the mentality that produced the activity. So Krishna gave this actually to purify our mentality. So there are two types of mentality in this world, enjoying mentality and service mentality. People are divided into two groups only in this world. The people have an enjoying mentality that I want to enjoy in this world and the other people have a service machine mentality. So enjoying mentality is a competitive mentality from with God. Because God is actually bhoktaram, yagita pasam. He is the enjoyer. If I want to enjoy, it means I compete with, compete with God. So that mentality, we will never be successful. When Giriraj Swami first met Srila Prabhupada, he came to Prabhupada. Srila Prabhupada asked, Oh, you want to serve God or you want to become God? When Giriraj Maharaj said, In my own flat where I was living, I have written over the shank on the mirror, I am God. So it appears that Krishna, uh, the Prabhupada has seen through my, through me what is written uh, in my room. So he asked me a question, you want to be God or you want to serve God? Giridharan Maharaj is, you know, he's a, he was a student of uh, psych, in psychology. So he's very sober. He did not answer. He was waiting for Prabhupada. So Prabhupada himself answered. If you want to become God, then why should God have one more competitor? Why should he give, God will give you intelligence to make one more competitor? If you want to serve God, then God will give you intelligence to serve God. So if we have enjoying mentality, it means we want to be competitor of God. If we have service attitude, it means we are on the right path and that is our constitutional position. Jivira, Swarupai, Krishna, Nitya Das. So the whole thing is that we have to change our attitude from enjoying mentality to service attitude. And that is actually the, that is the bottom line of devotional service. Therefore, at the time of initiation, uh, we are being awarded the title Das. So we are now servant. No, but by the way, we are still so conditioned that you ask somebody his name, hardly he will tell Das. We will say Prabhu. Can you see this is common? Is it, is it, you just ask any what is your name? He will hardly ever say Das. Because this is still in our mind. And I, das, I, how can I be servant? No, no, no. I'm not servant. I'm Prabhu. Somebody else may say, tell you Prabhu, but you tell Das, Das, Anudas. Our Gauriya Vaishna used to write Das, Anudas. I'm a servant of servants. I used to say generally, jokingly to the people, when somebody asked you na your name, you say Das or Bhomadas. You put a one Das on the front and one Das on the behind. Because when the train is climbing on the hill, you need double engine, one on the front and the back. So in a Kali Yuga for devotional service, you need double Das engine really to go a little fast. One Das is not working actually. But I, we are not telling, even our nam, name, we say, oh, Sakshi Gopal. Are Sakshi Gopal Das. But even people will not say Sakshi only. They will not say Gopal and Das both. Only say small name. Say a full name. Complete name. That will benefit actually. So because this mentality has to be curved. The enjoying mentality has to be curved. And then the last line. Even a slight inclination to enjoy the false happiness of the world. The Lord therefore created a particular situation to eradicate this remaining enjoying spirit. 
This unhappiness suffered by a sincere devotee is not technically a karmic reaction. It is rather the Lord's special mercy for inducing the devotee to completely let go of the material world and return home back to God. This is, Vish this is actually Bhisham Pitama told to the Yudhishthira Maharaj. You are Dharma Raj, Raj. Your brothers are also following the religion. And you are respectful to Brahmins and follow Brahminical principle. And on the top of that, Krishna is your well wisher and friend. But it's still so many reverses in your life. You suffered so much. What is the reason? Bisham asked this question. Yudhishthira could not answer. So Bisham answered. It's not your karma. It is call. It is time. And then Bhisham Pitamba pointed to Krishna said, time is under his control. It means he has arranged all these difficulties for you. It is not your karma. Krishna has organized all this. Why? Because to make you famous all over the world. The gold is put in a burning fire to purify. The deities when they are made, they are chiseled. Hit by and then they become beautiful and they are worshipable. So the devotees also by God are shaped properly. You know, you know how, how the earthen part is made in which the water is cold in a hot season. From outside you see the, the, the part maker is hitting ta 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 from outside you see you saw and running. But from inside he has a one hand which is actually giving shape to the part. Outside hitting, but inside. So even Krishna is giving painful suffering from outside, but inside he has a very merciful end, which shape us actually as a devotee. And then the devotee live forever. They do suffer, but their suffering is not suffering like ordinary people from their karma. But it was designed by Krishna actually to glorify them, to purify them. A sincere devotee earnestly desired to go back to Lord's abode. Therefore, he willingly absent Lord's merciful punishment and continue offering respect and obeisance to the Lord with his heart, words, and body. Such bona fide servant of the Lord, considering all hardship a small price to pay for gaining the personal association of Lord, suddenly become the legitimate son of God, as indicated here by the world Daiba. So this is a small payment to, to become this associate of God. How much people how much people spend money to simply one day shake hand with the Prime Minister? How many hours they wait? Here you are going to meet Krishna face to face and shake hand with him. So a little suffering of this world, why uh, why we cry? We just tolerate it. A small payment, a token payment to really pay to get Krishna's mercy. Just as one cannot approach the sun without becoming fire, one cannot approach the supreme pure, Lord Krishna, without undergoing a rigid purificatory process, which may appear like suffering, but which is in fact a curative treatment administered by the personal hand of the Lord. So the suffering of the devotees are reverses in the life of devotees are actually a curative procedure by Lord for purification of the devotee that he can become eligible to go back home, back to God and become associate of Lord. Srila Prabhupada ki jai, here our this verse is over. Hare Krishna. It's something which, I mean, I'm sorry for being late, but is it okay something is valuable that you yes. heard? Is in our life we may have difficulties, always continue chanting Hare Krishna. Definitely one day Krishna will bestow his cause, his mercy, and we will become the legitimate recipient of his association. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much. Uh, first, uh...